I've noticed a couple of common mistakes from people who've been playing career mode over the past year. Whether this is from posts on Reddit, messages on Discord, or YouTube videos, I've been seeing the same mistakes being made over and over again, and this made me decide to make a video about some of the lesser known parts of the game mode to hopefully explain how it works. I think the most obvious one that I see quite a lot is the total lack of experience in some people's teams. I made a video about FIFA 22 saying you can win basically everything with 16 year old players, age doesn't matter at all. And while this is true, I do actually think experience is important if you do want to be successful on career mode. You might be wondering, why should I have players in their late 30s in my team? How will it actually affect how things work? Well, the most obvious reason is that youth academy players will rarely have over 70 composure, which affects how well a player will perform in bigger matches. High composure means they'll make less mistakes and their stats will be lowered in smaller amounts in title battles, cup finals and relegation scraps, so all very important parts of your career mode journey. As composure is weightless for all positions, this means that every single player will have the same overall whether their composure is 1 or 99. It always makes sense to target players who are good in this area. As this is a really important stat for almost every position, the fact it doesn't cost any overall doesn't actually make a huge amount of sense. You should absolutely be exploiting this in every save you do. The only area that experience really translates to are the five mentality stats. Aggression, interceptions, positioning, vision and composure. This is basically a player's personality. How often they're in the right position and then what can they do with the ball when they have it at their feet. Make sure you have as many players who are good in this area as possible. While age doesn't directly translate to having higher stats in this ability, usually you will see a correlation between the two. Of course, if the difference between two players' abilities is massive in other areas, then absolutely go for the better player. For example, Eden Hazard and Vinicius Jr. are both left wingers at Real Madrid. Hazard has 88 composure, while Vinicius only has 79. This might make a tiny bit of difference maybe in a penalty shootout, if you're playing the matches, then every single person on the planet will prefer using Vinicius, as you absolutely should. While we're on the topic of young players, I do think people struggle to understand exactly how squad importance works. Having a young player with a sporadic first team player means they'll actually develop slower than a future prospect would if both are not played. This is because the squad role is 25% of how morale is calculated. Morale is then used to either speed up or slow down the player's development. Having a player on the right squad role is actually mega important if you want to improve their ability. Similarly, if a player isn't happy with the money they're earning on their contract, this can also slow their development down. Contracts are really a super underrated part of career mode and especially when it comes to youth development. Getting these two things right can move a player from being unhappy and developing at 2 overall a season to being delighted and improving at over 5. On the topic of contracts, it can also be a super handy way to move clubs if you want to step down the league. Just offer a player a £1 release clause, they'll accept the contract and then you'll instantly be fired. The next set of jobs will be at clubs worse than the one you were managing at before. Something else I see it quite often is a squad where they'll have 10 players in the 70s for overall and then maybe one player that's rated 95. You'll see them blasting through League 2, then League 1 and then the Championship, complaining about how easy the game is now. Sure, this could probably be fun if you were using sliders, but if you're not using sliders it will make the game so easy. Focusing all your time on one player is not only a bit unrealistic, but it just makes the game less fun. I used to do similar when I was younger, signing players like Rooney or Tevez, playing in the championship and while it was fun for a few games, having a player who's so much better than the rest really did get old really really fast. This unrealistic way of playing FIFA I think is a mistake that people make. While it can be fun if you're used to playing Ultimate Team, not having access to some of these really good players, I can imagine it is nice to actually be using a 95 rated player. But I think if you're on career mode, you should be playing as realistically as FIFA allows you to play even if you do allow yourself to be unrealistic at times. Maybe in your head you can justify Bojan joining Mansfield or Andre Gomez going to Palermo, but I think keep it small where you can. I've joked about saves in the past where Mbappe has joined Grimsby on this channel before, and that's the kind of thing you see all the time on Reddit. I just can't imagine it's too fun to have Mbappe in League One, and sometimes I do wonder how they actually got the money to do it in the first place. 
People also seem to mistake regens for other players. This is something I did make a full video on recently, but regens are actually created when an original player retires and has the same potential, position and nationality as the original player. To give an example, Cristiano Ronaldo's regen would be a Portuguese striker, he would have the same potential as Ronaldo which is currently 87, and they would either appear in the Saudi Arabian League or in the free agent. It's actually really easy to check whose regen a regen is. Firstly, go into edit players, check their date of birth and find a player with the same nationality, same positions and same birthday on Wikipedia. So for Ronaldo, this would be a striker born on the 5th of February. This is super easy to do and you can imagine that if you are checking every single Portuguese striker in the Saudi Arabian League, it won't take you long to find the Ronaldo regen. I think objectives are also a really misunderstood part of the game. You see people complaining that they've been fired for no reason, but 99% of the time it's because one of these board objectives. While I fully agree that often they don't make too much sense, you do actually only have to complete around 50% of them if you want to avoid being fired. This means if you don't want to sign 4 players from Canada or Japan, Saudi Arabia, just make sure you complete a different objective. Maybe signing a youth player in each position is super easy and that's one that comes up quite a lot. It's actually really easy to check just before the season starts and it does actually add a little bit of extra complications when it comes to playing career mode. With just a tiny bit of work, EA could make this a really interesting part of the game, but as it is, I can see why people don't really pay attention and don't understand it. Football Manager is a good example of a game that has board objectives that are both fun and make sense. You can be taken over by a Thai owner, and you'll get an objective saying you should sign some more Thai players. You can have a board who prefer playing long ball, and then they'll get annoyed when your shot pressing football doesn't win enough matches. Little things like this can make the game more fun, and also stop people getting annoyed at these random firings you see all the time on Reddit. If you do actually want to make your save a little bit more interesting, maybe you're struggling to keep going with career mode, you can always add storylines and give you an extra little reason to keep playing. I mean, you might actually not know what a storyline is, how to find them, or make your own. I actually explained exactly how you can incorporate storylines into your career mode in the video linked at the top of this one right now. But basically, just set a little challenge for yourself and give yourself an objective you need to do. One example you could have is your board maybe setting up an academy in South America, so give yourself the challenge that you have to sign three under 21 players from South America and send your youth scouts to three South American countries for the next nine months. Super little challenges like this do make the game a lot more fun, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons that people actually stop playing career mode. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was mainly me just giving my opinion on how other people play FIFA career mode. If you don't agree with me, that is absolutely fine. Play career mode however you enjoy it. That's what we all play the game for, because we actually think it's quite fun. If you've got any suggestions for other mistakes that you think people make, or you want to try and reply to something that you find annoying on other people's saves, make sure you leave it in the comments below. Check out the two videos on screen right now if you want more FIFA content. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon. Cheers and goodbye.